is uh, arranged against. There's a remarkable line in not the army. Pardon me. The army is not arranged against him. Well, it, in some ways, it is. You know, the fact that he has to step down and the statements that were sort of highlighted by Hasnat Sab, those are sort of indication of distancing, not against, but distancing. There is a remarkable scene in the movie in the movie Mahabharata and the before the story, where one of the characters, this is uh, I think the character is the uh, uh, Karna, when he is in, in a, engaged in a fight with uh, with Arjuna, and there uh, the clouds come and he forgets his mantra and he is not able to call the spell, and then Krishna comes and says, "All the vital signs are against you. Must prepare to die." All right. It seems like now all the vital signs are yeah, Exactly. And I would like to point out another thing that uh, I will not l like to read too much into that, but still um, General Kiani, he issued a statement of condolences for uh, Benzi Bhutto, which I think is little away from the protocol because his chief, which is the president, he's chief of the, uh, uh, superior chief of the army, he had already done that. And then the junior person doing that shows that, as you said, uh, he, he would try to keep a distance from him as the time progresses. A and what I meant by that was for Musharraf to be able to rig the elections, the entire government machinery has to go along with exactly. him. And there could be a silent revolt of people just not aborting his life. Yes, know. but it has happened. It we are events. ignoring uh, uh, the degree to which uh, the Musharraf government, which includes the Chaudhrys of Gujarat, control the Nazims. And the, the election will be rigged through the Nazims, uh, the system that they set up. So uh, I tend to think that it's relatively easy to do because uh, the rigging has to be relatively minor uh, to put uh, certain candidates in. No, not, not, not so not easy not now. Easy. Now, I, I think uh, the, the, after this uh, incident of Benazir Bhutto, I think people are too emotional. Even Nazim might be having second thoughts. You see, again, Nazim is not simply going to do it because previously doing it under Musharraf had a guarantee of immunity, legal and social. Now you know yeah. there are going to be riots in the street and people may no longer sort of care for this thing and given the culture of violence that has evolved, how can you defend yourself and protect yourself? So I think there is a built-in punishment. The retaliation factor is going to be calculated into this thing. People are going to calculate their self-interest in a way. Uh, uh, sure, uh, they are political animals. animals. And they have to survive yeah, long term and see this free. thing. So, so you're are arguing that uh, the people have uh, uh, risen to consciousness in a sense. Well, what I see left, right, and center is nothing but proof of that. The very fact that people are coming back that, you know, a very powerful leader had to return to the position of uh, APDM. The, what, you know, people like Manto Saab and Imran Khan and others have been saying and saying consistently. Uh, other people are returning to that position. That, to me, indicates emergence of a democratic core in Pakistan. And that has become a frame of reference to be people judged, you know. That was very important. People try to sort of shrug and say, who are, who are you to sort of judge me or not? Why should I even think about what you are doing because you are not political, I am so and so forth. That's no longer. What I'm submitting to you for your comment is a definite triangulation of power. Media being mm -hmm. one very important component, which has been taken out of that equation but cannot be kept out of the equation for long. Second is the opinion leaders and intellectuals and the civil society leaders who have become conscious of the country, nation. And third is the actual holders of power who may be given that chance once every four years or five years and taken out of that when needed. So that triangulation of power, I think, is going to create different kind of pressure. Than, and I don't think any human being can be totally oblivious to that kind of pressure and pain. You know, so I think that may There's happen. There's another thing that the, the students have come after a very long, long time. time. Mm -hmm. After, I, I think after Ayub Khan's movement, they were just quiet. They yeah, absolutely. This absolutely. Is gone. Uh, and that, that, that calls to my mind the uh, famous couplet by Shah Saifuddin said. Chandni raat badi der ke baad aai hai. Aur nappik baat badi der ke baad aai hai. Aaj ki raat wae hai badi der ke baad. Aaj ki raat badi der ke baad aai hai. So students have come back to the fold after a long time and that's uh, remarkable. And they are very dangerous, you know, in terms of mass movement. I would movements. say effective. I would if say effective. I, no, I, I mean to say dangerous for the establishment. Yes, yes, yes. They can go to, you know, they're desperate and they are young and they, they can they can take risks and they can really confront the po yes. police. You know. uh, I just wanted to say uh, what was uh, clear in Farooq Hassan's um, uh, uh, analysis. Sort of analysis was also the limits of U.S. power. Yes. Uh, we should be very careful about thinking that the U.S. is all powerful, that it can manage, uh, you know, democracies thousands of miles away. In fact, um, you know, as the assassination, it, it's highlighted anything. Uh, is that it's thrown many people's plans. Well, I uh, think if anything was a clear indication of the military limits of the U.S. power, that was Iraq. And if anything is the, defining the limits of the diplomatic power, that's Pakistan. Pakistan, exactly. Right, so, so also, also uh, Bolivia, Venezuela, 
Uh, Ecuador, Ecuador, and uh, and even many places. You know, this is this is you know, all powers have limited. Uh, even I would say Somalia. I think yeah. they messed up uh, things yeah. there. Uh, things are not okay in Somalia, even in Somalia. So let me c ask you to conclude, wrap it up. What do you think is the scenario for next six months? What's the best case scenario and the worst case scenario? Same to you, sir. Uh, I'm actually very, very optimistic about Pakistan, even though I keep uh, stressing that it's almost the last chance for Pakistan to put its own house in order. But I think uh, certain forces, as you say, have come together. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would uh, caution that uh, the consensus is very thin. It's mm -hmm. only on some very... Uh, small issues. There are other very deep fissures in Pakistan. Economic, that issue that you raised, I think it's a very important one and has ultimately to be addressed if any real change is to come in Pakistan. You cannot have a society where the rich get richer uh, and increasingly a smaller and smaller minority, uh, the concentration of wealth and the rest of the country is left to fend for itself. Um, and, uh, and on the social cultural issues also, there are deep fissures in Pakistani society as Pakistani society both modernizes and tries to stay true to it, it's, it's, uh, what it considers its very being. So um, uh, all I would say is that all of these issues, the economic and the cultural social, can only happen when there is a framework. And the only framework that everyone agrees on, and that's why I'm so optimistic, is the 73 Constitution. What is the worst case scenario? Um, the worst case scenario is that the army will not agree to any of this and will pursue its own interest, and the army can very realistically at this point be the doom of the whole country. Uh, and I think in, in, in trying to use the country for their own benefit, uh, they're actually taking both themselves because they can't but exist without But will that be without a price or will it be a price that the whole country will uh, suffer a breakdown of the kind we are seeing these days? I think civil unrest is what well, you'll have. Yes. Uh, you, you know, a, a low boil, if you will, if, mm -hmm. uh, if that's a metaphor that appeals. Mm -hmm. uh, and the army increasingly is unable to control. Their own soldiers are uh, deserting, um, in, if not in droves, uh, certainly in, uh, it's a leak and it can increase. Absolutely. So. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm optimistic. I agree with you uh, that uh, uh, there's a lot of optimism and uh, one of the reasons is that if you just look at the civil rights movement, it has been going on, although at the l sometimes at low intensity, but still it has been going on. Uh, with with the focus uh, uh, in front of them, which is the restoration of the 1972 uh, 73 Constitution, which is an extremely important document because that, as you said, uh, that is the base on which uh, the other parts of uh, the society, segments of society, would be built. And I, I think that uh, we have mentioned about the economic issues and other social issues. I think if we look at the the speeches or the arguments going around in Pakistan, I think uh, people are aware of that. The civil society is aware of that, and people at large are also aware of that. We were just waiting for the results of the election, whether these sentiments would translate themselves into uh, a certain, uh, you know, it's a number game actually, who is elected, uh, who will be defeated. And it was expected that in spite of all the other negative aspects of uh, a free electioneering, which is the bradri system and the personal context and role of the uh, establishment and role of the nazams, I think people, when they will, uh, when they would have gone out, if the election would have been held on the eighth, would have gone out uh, to vote. They would have voted, uh, keeping in view all these problems and all these important aspects of the uh, Pakistani development uh, for the future. So uh, this is, and I'm optimistic because um, I think the society has been dynamic. Uh, there has been extremely uh, brutal, I would say, oppression by the state, which we have, which we have not seen before. Uh, um, in spite of that, it went on, and it went on for a very long time. And also, uh, there was a hope that before it never happened that so many judges uh, of the uh, Supreme Court or the High Court. Uh, refused to take oath under PCO. This was a new uh, element in the Pakistani polity or Pakistani um, constitutional history also. They just revolted and they were put in jail. They said, okay, that's fine. They resisted and they kept on resisting. Uh, so I think uh, there's a lot of optimism because the society is aware. Uh, your other, uh, you, sa you said, what's the mm -hmm. doomsday? Mm -hmm. I think, um, uh, again, that Musharraf, uh, in spite of, you rightly said that normal people, but we were talking of the normal people, <laughs> that they are very sensitive to, uh, you know, uh, uh, 
uh, what happens to them if they take a certain action. But I think in case of Musharraf, if we look at his history, what he did in Kargil and what he uh, did otherwise, you know, in, uh, in March and then again in November imposing another martial law, second martial law, this time against himself. Uh, he can he can be really drastic and he can go along with the elections uh, saying okay I'll postpone it for one month uh, being, and then keep uh, being asked being, uh, and then all the elections okay. and rig them right. you know and and tell to the world and maybe US also accepts uh, those results but that will have uh, drastic uh, circumstances people are not going to accept that uh, that uh, that kind of uh, election those kind of elections or the parliament and the le there'll be no legitimacy uh, there'll be a lot of uh, uh, writing and there'll be a lot of disobedience in the Pakistani society. Well, I 